Yeah. You still got it in your fish nuts, now you only get it in your night dress. I had to dig for these. The last time I wore these was when I did my sexy Dr. Phil costume. Okay, so word is, is that 2012, 2013, 2014, mid-2010 Tumblr era is coming back. And people have been saying this for maybe two years now. And I'm here to tell you that it is 100% fully back. It's back in swing, baby. All right, our time is now. Here's the thing, though. You can tell if someone was actually a Tumblr girl back when they were teenagers and like that was their prime. And you can tell who desperately wanted to be a Tumblr girl in that time, but potentially was too young. I'm a prime example of that, okay? <laughs> I was the wannabe Tumblr girl, okay? I was... It was bad. I joined when I was in the fifth fucking grade, which is far too young, okay? It opened me up to this whole new world. I'm so sorry to everyone who has never gotten to experience that. Yes, I was around for it and I am better than everyone because of it, but I was a wannabe, okay? I was just too young. I didn't have the money to buy fucking American apparel. I didn't have the opportunity to be experiencing all the things that the Tumblr girls were, which were essentially just like smoking oh. cigarettes in the woods and taking flash photography of it. I took flash photography in the woods, okay? But it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't cool. It was very pathetic. <laughs> Some of you may be asking me right now, Nicole, what the hell is Tumblr? I wasn't around for it. I'm just like a wee 15 year old. And the, the only thing that I can tell you is to get off. Get off the internet right now. It's gonna be better for you if you just um, are not on here. Anyway, you're still here, so. This whole entire outfit is like severely uncomfortable. I think I'm gonna lay down like therapist style because now I have to like retell what Tumblr is. Okay, so essentially Tumblr was this blogging website where you could post your own posts, you could code your own little theme to your own page, and then you had your own like little website and you could make it so personal. And then you can... Okay. You can also like reblog stuff. So like people would post like funny memes. That's like where memes were born. And then you could like reblog them or just like them. And then there's like notes on them, which basically means the amount of likes that something has. And then it, basically like this whole aesthetic started within the mid 2010s where um, it, it just like was this thing where there was just this very like big romanticization of like mental illness and like grunginess and like slazy and like the music was so good and then the aesthetic was so good and like it was like the Pinterest dreams of all dreams because all the photos on your feed would be so aesthetic but then you could also like read about someone's like terrible life and all of their mental illness issues like all at the same time but then you could also see a funny meme all at the same time and then there was also porn but then Tumblr also got rid of that which kind of led to the downfall of Tumblr because like if you take away the porn, then like then what what's the website for? You know what I mean? Essentially, you know how like fucking old people are like, oh my God, the 80s was the best time of our lives. No offense, mom. And like it does look very fun, but that is the way that people in their 20s speak about tumblr.com within like 20, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I think it dissipated. Except there's so many people just like me who never got to live out their little Tumblr dreams because we were too young. We were too young. We didn't have the funds to shop where we want to shop. Or maybe we lived in a place where like an Urban Outfitters and American Apparel and a Lush was not within close vicinity at all. And even if it was in close vicinity, we would shoplift from them there. If you know my Lush stealing store, it's not stealing. I I committed mail fraud. That's a different story. Tumblr and my obsession with Lush caused me to commit mail fraud. That's so sad. Anyway, 
Wow, another reason why Tumblr is just toxic. Tumblr in this time introduced me and so many other people to all these amazing bands such as the 1975, the Arctic Monkeys, Marina the Diamonds, Lana Del Rey, The Neighborhood, Lord, MGMT, The Smiths. So even though there were other social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram, it did not hit the same way that Tumblr hit because you had access to all these new things and you were learning something new every single time you went onto that website and it was curated so well for you. It birthed so many like celebrities also, probably some of like your favorite social media stars at one point or another were pretty big on Tumblr. It birthed Barbie Ferreira. She was a Tumblr girly. It birthed Acacia Brindley. Let's move on. And while now I talk about this being like the best time of my life and like how it was so perfect, I think it just comes down to being like a nostalgia thing and like a comfort thing. Because I remember being like a 13, 14 year old sitting in the dark in my room, listening to Summertime Sadness and video games by Lana Del Rey on repeat and just scrolling through Tumblr and reblogging shit that had nothing to do with me, like depressive quotes, like <coughs> underneath a galaxy print. And like, I was 13 at the time. I was like crying over a heartbreak that I had never even experienced and romanticizing other people's depression. Tumblr definitely had its faults. Like for example, you could send anonymous messages to people where people were absolutely getting fucking cyber bullied and wrecked on there. And then also you had people like me who were sending, you know, mean anonymous hate mail to myself. I'd be like, you stupid fucking ugly bitch and I'd be like oh my god you're so mean karma's gonna get you girl and I was talking to myself it's a thing I'm admitting it glamorizing drug use and also eating disorders was very common on there and ultimately its downfall was not the cause of so many eating disorders within young people it was the fact that mature content was no longer allowed on there Tumblr was strange in that way you could absolutely have a blog about eating disorders and thinspo that's a word, a complete pro-Anna page, as you would call it. But they were like, you know where we draw the line? Mature content, we're taking that shit down. And that was the death of Tumblr. Personally, I am gripping onto that era for dear life. And it seems like every other young person is also gripping onto it for dear life because the Tumblr era is just back in full swing. There is such a thing as a 10 year cycle where everything that happened 10 years ago will happen again very soon. It's no secret. And Tumblr is no exception to that. New York Fashion Week just happened and the resurgence of indie sleaze is severe. Everyone everywhere who has an opinion on fashion has got on their little TikTok page and has been like, Indie Sleaze is making its resurgence. I'm a trend forecaster and there is an obscene amount of evidence that the Indie Sleaze Tumblr aesthetic is coming back and we need to talk about it. Indie Sleaze is making a comeback and I feel like I've got quite a lot of experience in this area. So and even when you think about it, the outfit that I'm currently wearing, whether you want to call it Indie Sleaze, Tumblr era, e-girl, whatever the fuck you want to call it, it's not too ridiculous to wear this out and about. This was fully inspired to be like a Tumblr outfit and everything, but I could wear this outside right now and people would be like, that seems pretty appropriate for the time right now. Like that's not like weird or anything. Am I like severely uncomfortable? Yes. Are my shorts literally unbuttoned because these are not my size because a bitch has been eating good lately? Yeah, but I'm, I, I wouldn't wear that. I wouldn't wear this out, but like I, I could if my shorts fit. Let's talk about even the way that we take our photos nowadays, okay? Out with the curated Instagram photos we all say as we still curate our Instagram photos to be photo dumps and so that it's perfect and the aesthetic all goes together. But the flash photography is coming back, all right? You know how Polaroids and film was totally in? Right now, it is totally the digital cameras making a comeback, which is what like all the photos on Tumblr were taken with. It was a digital camera, you would put the flash on you would use your nikon cool pics or maybe if you were lucky and had a fucking dslr in your home then you would use that and then you would like hold your eos lip balm and then you would take it as flash photography and then you'd be like i'm a photographer but anyway it's making a resurgence absolutely emma chamberlain and chloe cherry and a bunch of other models were recently photographed by a photographer named chessa 
on Instagram. When you look at the photos, you're like, oh yeah, this would have definitely gotten like 200,000 reblogs on Tumblr in 2014, 100%. And that shit is in right now after like the last two, three years, film photography was all the rage. The same way that like fashion cycles and other clothing trends are moving like rapidly, so is every other trend. Fashion, home decor, makeup styles, fucking body types, but now it's even like photography. Forget a 10 year cycle. Shit is now on like a two day period. You miss that two day window, old news. Oh my God, photo booths were like totally a thing last week. It's old now. No one's taking photo booth pictures. Oh, you took a photo booth picture? That is so last week. <laughs> and I'll be the first to admit it. I know my haircut is just a little Tumblr scene emo haircut reimagined. I have a shag, okay? I'm not gonna take my hat off because my roots are, I'm gonna take it off. My roots, my, my roots are Reesey. Oh my God. I have a shag haircut, okay? I, it's, I'm not going anywhere with it. I absolutely love my haircut, but I know damn well that if I part my hair to the side, I have a 2013 Tumblr haircut and I love that. I essentially got like 12 year old Nicole's haircut of her dreams. Like I wanted the side swept bangs so fucking bad. I wanted to look like Acacia Brindley so fucking bad. Admit it, you did too, but like, even the haircuts making a resurgence. All those bands that I named previously that were super big on Tumblr are making a comeback. Oh, you want a new Arctic Monkeys album? Good news, new Arctic Monkeys album, October 2022. 1975 album. Lana Del Rey is still Lana Del Rey. -ing. Fucking strokes. You wanna know how I found out about the strokes? It was because of Tumblr. A friend's friend ran the page, fuck yeah, juliancasablancas.tumblr.com. And I remember being like, who is that? And my friend being like, oh, it's this fucking greasy rat. And I'm me being like, ew. And then me 10 years later, and I'm fiending for this man. 10 year cycle, baby, I'm telling you. This video is sponsored by PayPal Honey. If you didn't know, it's the number one shopping tool in America. Think of Honey as like your little friend, like your online savings sidekick, you know? Essentially, it automatically searches the web for promo codes so that you don't have to. Once you're ready to buy something online, Honey just pops up with promo codes ready to save you some money, all with the click of a button, and it is free. That's a steal. I've been using Honey for years now, but most recently I used Honey because I was buying cat food online. And Honey helped save me a lot of money, okay, Honey? And Honey works on a lot of the websites that you're already using for shopping, so you might as well get Honey. It's also fun when you save money. It's like a dopamine rush, you know? You can get Honey absolutely for free for your browser at joinhoney.com slash Nicole Raffi, and you can help support my channel. Thank you, Honey. Hold on, I need to get back into like therapy mode. Hold on. This is more comfortable than I ever was when I sat in therapy. But anyway, as I was thinking about what to talk about in this video, I was wondering like, why do we want to go back to the Tumblr era so bad? Um, and why are so many people so eager about it, especially when there was so many downsides to the site, which I'll talk about soon. I feel like there's no other era or time period like this within our lifetimes that we like thrive and miss so bad. Like if you told me bring back the 2016, 2017 Snapchat filter era, I would have been like, absolutely not. Get that thing away from me. No fucking way. But everyone is so fond of that time on Tumblr. And like, why is that? And I realized that it's the nostalgia and the comfort of it all. I suffer with severe nostalgia problems. Severe. It's gotten a lot better, but holy shit. Like I would cry if like, I would smell my hand sanitizer and I'd be like, oh my God, the scent of this hand sanitizer brings me back to this time of my life that was like so terrible, but also like it's so comforting because it was so bad and like it's a comfort feeling because I already experienced that feeling before. So it's a lot like new and unfamiliar, which is somehow more comfortable than something new and good because new is bad and old and comfortable, even if it is bad, is good and 
I cannot be the only person who suffers with this. Like I said earlier on in the video, uh, people have been saying that the Tumblr era has been coming back for like the last two years, okay? Like since the beginning of the pandemic, people are like, the Tumblr era is coming back, guys. Be careful. It's coming back. And like no one has fully announced that it's back. So I'm here to fully announce it's back, okay? Like I am putting my foot down. It's back. Do you like my vegan docs that still aren't broken in after like two years of wearing them? During the pandemic, I think a lot of people were coming back to things that made them feel comfortable and safe and warm and fuzzy and, you know, oftentimes return to their like childhood bedrooms where maybe they like resurfaced something that like reminded them of the Tumblr era. And like, I think all of those things combined while so many people are experiencing the same thing has made people be like yo we should bring this back like this this was kind of good you know because it's comfortable it's safe it's something that is familiar to us like personally for me i have not stopped listening to the music that i listened to in like 2013 and 2014 because that music makes me feel safe and comfortable and listening to it over and over again makes me feel like i'm a 13 and 14 year old again with like zero life issues you know i think it shaped a lot of people's like formative years and was perceived as fucking cool and never really went out of style so like why wouldn't you want to return back to that and like what better place to resurface the tumblr era than tiktok.fucking.com 10 years from now a bunch of people are going to look back and listen to the music that was trending on tiktok and be like oh my god this was the prime tiktok era i mean that's how i feel about it like just from like 2020 i'll hear a song that was popular in 2020 play the renegade and it's like i'm getting like fucking war flashbacks okay. there is whole like aesthetic sub genres on tiktok already similar to tumblr you have the clean girl aesthetic you have the grungy girl aesthetic there was the e-girls a few years ago but this is kind of where i get into the bad side of tumblr trends making a resurgence tumblr had anonymity you could just make a username did never have to show your face and you could repost whatever you wanted of course there can be bad to that tiktok does not have that if you plan on making any type of content on there most of the time it's gonna involve your face and your body and that can be so harmful especially the fact that kids just have access to if it. If you were on Tumblr, you probably recognize the term pro-ana, which stands for pro-anorexia, which I found out recently is a whole community on TikTok. And I don't want to get too into it because I don't want to, you know, give attention to things like that, but it's sad and it's definitely there. Similar words that were used back then, such as finspo are a thing, finspiration, body checking. It, it, history is repeating itself in that way same thing with self-harming and encouraging self-harm self-diagnosing to a harmful extent that was a very big thing 10 years ago and it's a very big thing now a lot of people will say that tiktok is by far the most toxic social media app that they own i know plenty of people myself included who have had to delete the app plenty of times and i read somewhere that someone had mentioned that on tumblr you kind of had to like go looking for the bad stuff that you didn't actually want to see which was true because you got to choose who you followed and there was like an explore page and you know you kind of got to curate your own feed but when it comes to tiktok literally anything can be thrown your way even things that you're like okay not interested in like there's a few topics where i'm like absolutely not do not show me this and it It'll still get shown to me all the time. I have people on there who I'm like, do not show me this person again. And they are still shown to me. I mean, quite literally, like just a second ago, I was on TikTok. I'm laughing my ass off. I'm wheezing. And then the next video that I scroll, it's like young single woman four found brutally beaten and murdered in the woods and like in great graphic detail. And I'm like, holy fuck, this is not good for your brain where you have like this like total like dopamine spike and then it's that there's plenty of videos that are very triggering for me to see and they are on my tiktok so if i'm in like in a bad mental headspace i need to get out of there and fucking turn off that app but not all people you know have the self-control to do something like that that's not me being like i have so much self-control it's like no like at the age of 
fucking 16, I would have just kept scrolling. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have been like, let me turn this off. I'd just be like, okay, let me go find something better. Yeah, TikTok is, is more dangerous and open to a lot more stuff than Tumblr was, in my opinion. And the whole Tumblr era and aesthetic had its severe faults as well. Like, for example, the idolization of skinny white girls. You rarely, if ever, saw women being idolized if they were above a size two and if they weren't white. That's just the truth of it. So of course it's easy for someone like me to be like, oh my God, I'm so fond of that era. And it's because I saw girls like me, girls who looked like me were young, skinny, and white. And I was like, I wanna be them. And it was like realistic for me. When it comes to the Tumblr era making its comeback, uh, I am in full support as long as it's better. Bring back the fashion sense. Bring back the music. I, I, there's no need to bring it back. I'm already still listening to it. So. Bring back the pastel hair colors. I always wanted that like cotton candy pink color so fucking bad. Bring back taking pictures of your little lush bath bomb in the bathtub, which I try to do one time on Snapchat. I took a photo of myself in the bathtub, like just like my bath water, and then the little like silver thing at the end of the bathtub, it's reflective. I didn't realize until, you know, the photo had already been up for like 45 minutes, um, and my naked little body was in the photo, so. Don't bring that back, or do, it's okay if you're of age. I'm all for bringing back Alex Turner full swing and bringing back little collage making and playlist making. I'm all for it, okay? Not much has changed for me. I am still deep into my little Tumblr era, okay? I just don't use Tumblr anymore. I'm all for bringing this back as long as we can try and get rid of the things that are not so good for our brains that were very prevalent 10 years ago and are you know making a severe comeback right now for example pro anna promoting self-harm romanticizing drug abuse romanticizing mental illness all the things that are hurting young people's brains and now is like a 23 year old with an almost developed prefrontal cortex is that what's going to be formed in two years Oh, yeah, yeah, the prefrontal cortex. Yeah, because my prefrontal cortex is almost developed, so that's why I could remember and that. Now that I am of an age where I can recognize that sites like this need to be more monitored and controlled because obviously children are not going to get off of these apps and websites, I think these issues need to be a little bit more well-known and aware that but these communities are very harmful and not good for young people's brains are still happening on TikTok and Twitter especially. Let's not bring that back, okay? I never thought I'd say this, but maybe, just maybe, the censorship on TikTok is a good thing. Hmm. Anyway, if there's anything that you've learned from this video, I hope it's that the Tumblr era is to me what the 80s is to my parents and that I have severe nostalgia issues. And also that I don't really recommend wearing shorts that aren't your size. What's in right now? Tumblr era, collage making, Gilmore Girls, pastel hair, the Arctic Monkeys, out. Uh, these shorts, Adam Levine and the Queen. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please make sure that you leave it a like. It helps me out so much. Also, leave a comment. What was your favorite part of the little Tumblr era? If you were a part of it, and uh, what part are we most definitely bringing back? Make sure that you subscribe if you want to be nasty. If not, you're disgusting. Also, make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post, or else you work gross. If you want to rock a little tote that you would definitely see within the Tumblr era, my tote bags are still for sale. I only have a few left. So, if you want to follow me on my other social social media, Instagram, Twitter, Depop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nikki Nasty. Clem, get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. I'm going to go now. I need to go make a little collage and a little matching playlist to go with it and cry in my room to Lana Del Rey. Maybe I'll wash my hair. Probably not, though. Okay, goodbye. But we can't do it sometime.